Um, so I was fortunate to give this uh, talk yesterday, so this will be a little bit of a rehash if you were here yesterday for it, but if you weren't, uh, welcome. Uh, so uh, this is a little bit softer of a talk that I'm used to giving, but uh, I think it's an important topic. It's how do we look at the past and ratchet it up. Uh, this phenomenon known as crypto tribalism. And uh, I would like to give Dylan here, my co-founder, props for the awesome slide design. So thanks, Dylan. <clears throat> so yeah, disclaimer, I'm just going to be talking about some of my own personal beliefs here. Uh, and I don't have all the answers, so I'd love if you could participate and join the conversation. Uh, so what is tribalism? Uh, it's got a lot of scopes. It's found in all different uh, stratifications of uh, the world and humanity. It's a natural phenomenon. So, you know, monetary systems are inherently tribal. Uh, there's competition now between old fiat systems and new crypto systems. Uh, political systems are inherently tribal uh, as people are vying for control and power. Um, and this, you know, cultural systems uh, can be tribal too. Uh, there's you know overgeneralization of Eastern and Western cultures, uh, and so you know tribes are just factional groups uh, competing for power, um, and you know they're culturally transmitted. People are born into their tribe. They uh, learn their norms and mores, uh, and you know they share beliefs, causes, and common interests, and they collaborate. Uh, so what's so bad about that? Uh, you know, that's natural, uh, but crypto tribalism is the phenomena of these groups being for power and influence within open source crypto communities. So, yeah, why is this problematic? Um, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, we're a small group of innovators uh, in the blockchain industry right now, so uh, we're dividing our currently uh, already small community with tribalism. Uh, and you know, we can cancel each other's narratives out. Uh, so if we're telling stories and narratives that um, undermine each other, that's not very good and creates sort of a confusing outward perception of our industry. Um, it also slows smart innovation. Uh, so we're not gonna get as much done if we're siloing ourselves um, and, you know, so we're losing sight of maybe what brought us here in the first place. Uh, so I was a crypto tribalist at one point. Um, I started out as Bitcoin curious in, uh, my, in the early days uh, in college uh, and then fell down the rabbit hole of uh, cryptocurrency with BitShares and, uh, you know, I was just blown away. I was like, wow, uh, we can put monetary systems on the internet and uh, we can, you know, create grassroots initiatives around this. Uh, and, you know, that was the beginning of DeFi as it's known as centralized finance. Uh, so that was very interesting and I was just like, how can people not see this opportunity? Uh, so, you know, eventually I took a little hiatus to get my stuff together and came back when Steam came out, which is an open source social network. Uh, and that was so mind blowing. I was like, wow, we can distribute value to people that are participating in the system. Uh, it's very liquid and it was allowing us to, you know, do real world things with uh, this cryptocurrency system and fund real world projects. And, you know, that really, at that point in my life, uh, I lived this transformation and it really helped me out uh, with my own personal finances and, uh, so I was sold. I, I knew that this industry is going to be uh, big and I wanted to go all in. So I started looking around and I actually dismissed Ethereum in the early days, but came back around to learn more and interact with it. Um, and you know, nowadays I'm an EOSIO practitioner, but uh, chain agnostic as well, I'm willing to look across the industry and cherry pick the best ideas. So I've come a long way. Uh, this is the BitShares Mobile. We actually did a peer-to-peer -peer road trip in 2015 and interviewed community members, but you know, this is my tribe. Uh, so we did it differently when we were raising our community in Detroit. Um, we, we started congregating through meetup groups uh, in late 2017. Uh, Michigan Bitcoiners predated that a bit, but Detroit Blockchainers was designed to be 
a group that was inherently neutral. And so we were able to take uh, and congregate all kinds of crypto enthusiasts uh, under this banner and foster a culture of learning from each other. Um, and you know, we all joined forces to start to develop the regional blockchain ecosystem in Southeast Michigan and uh, started forming companies and organizations around this. So EOS Detroit was formed in this way to be a block producer candidate um, for EOS. That was uh, last year, March 2018. Uh, and Detroit Blockchain Center came a little later to continue that idea of having a neutral advocacy group. Uh, so working together allowed us to cover more ground. Uh, and we started EOS Detroit because we wanted to actively serve these open source communities that we care about uh, and that have provided for us and that have so much potential to provide for people all over the world. Um, and we also wanted to bring that down back to Detroit. Look, uh, so strengthening our local tech ecosystem, uh, building out and planning use cases that we can deploy locally to actually start helping people on the ground, uh, and preparing and educating people for this paradigm shift in the global economy. Um, and so, you know, I'm curious though to the audience, why are you here? Why did crypto choose you? If you want to participate, you can tweet about it. Uh, hashtag why crypto chose me. I'm curious what you think and why you're here. Um, so, you know, I've got some personal motivations for this too. Uh, you know, I'm interested in rebalancing power structures in the world, uh, efficiency gains, making antiquated systems uh, work better and work better for people. Um, you know, and the financial opportunity that exists here. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of people drawn to uh, cryptocurrency to make some money. Um, and also the freedom that's inherently available when we can gain sovereignty over our own value through cryptography. Uh, so helping people, of course, that's one of our major reasons for doing what we do. Um, so we can provide better conditions for people and uh, also just curiosity. It's so fascinating being on the edge of technology. Uh, so, in order to reframe uh, crypto, uh, the cryptocurrency community, uh, we have to shift our thinking. Um, we need to go from a perspective of scarcity, which is causing us to feel like there's not enough to go around, to a perspective of, of, <clears throat> of abundance. Uh, and I think doing so will really allow us to transcend some of these risks within uh, the existing blockchain industry. Uh, and it really starts with, uh, you know, reflecting within, why are you here, understanding your own self-interest, figuring out how to maybe tampen down your ego, open up your ears, and be willing to listen to other uh, people across the industry. Um, and widening your perspective. I mean, we can cherry pick the best from each group and overlay those, uh, those different innovations to build something better. So if we take a step back, we're able to actually draw a larger circle and create one tribe where we're all working together to advance our goals. Because I think there are some shared goals here. Um, and you know, it's really important that we take stock of our professionalism, you know, inclusion and respect uh, across the industry. Instead of assuming someone's out to scam you, maybe let open up your ears, assume good faith and positive intent, and have a conversation with someone, even if they're your competitor. Uh, and you know, listen for the actual meaning that people are trying to convey, not necessarily their word choice. Uh, and so there's these common threads, I think, that we're all passionate for seeking solutions to the world's challenges and excited about the opportunity here and what we can accomplish building together. And I think a lot of us really love the idea that we can uh, create this freedom enabling technology and deploy it around the world. Uh, so if we cast a wider network, um, you know, these combined network effects will be added and will accelerate the growth and adoption of digital assets and decentralized applications. Um, and you know, so I challenge everyone to serve as an ambassador to our industry in this more objective way and, you know, cherry pick the best concepts and methods. And moving forward, we're getting into uh, interoperability technologies now where you can actually run your application across multiple networks and share your the best from each. So, um, you know, ESIO smart contracts are designed to be portable. You can 
deploy it on one ESIO network, and so you can take those, the same code and deploy it on another. If you decide you need to move or you want to support multiple chains, and there's uh, also really amazing layer two solutions, uh, such as the DAT network, which even allow you to start a transaction on one network and finish it on another. Uh, so you could have an Ethereum transaction, go back, consult an EOSIO network, and then come back around and finalize on Ethereum. Uh, so in closing, uh, you know, I, I challenge us to practice crypto cosmopolitanism. Uh, so cosmopolitanism is the belief in one single human community across the world. And, you know, take a minute to look around and meet someone that you haven't uh, introduced yourself to today. Say hi and uh, make a new friend because we're all here trying to do the same uh, goals in the end. We're just taking different paths. So thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. Uh, and if you want to follow us, uh, we're on all the typical suspects. So appreciate it, guys. <laughs>